Welcome to Talk of Tumwa, the production of Greater Tumwa Partners in Progress. On this podcast, we'll talk about the local businesses in Ottumwa to give you the backstory to their success. We'll also talk about the economic initiatives that are driving the progress of the community. And we'll talk about the issues that the community faces and much more. So stick around and let's talk of Tumwa. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Talk of Tumwa. Um, this episode is really special for us because this launches the series on arts in Ottumwa. Um, today, we have with us uh, Miss Holly Berg, who is the chair of the Ottumwa Area Arts Council. Welcome, Holly. Hi. Thanks for having me. So um, let's. a lot of people don't understand that Ottumwa really is a pretty vibrant arts community, um, and you guys are, are one facet of that bigger piece of the puzzle. So let's, uh, for anybody who doesn't know what the Arts Council is, can you start off, just give a little bit of background about the organization? Yeah, so the Ottumwa Area Arts Council was formed in 1974, and at that time it was uh, really kind of uh, encompassing all the arts groups coming together as a consortium, uh, and since then has really kind of uh, evolved with other groups having uh, taking the lead on other things like uh, music and theater. The uh, Tumwa Area Arts Council works to uh, enhance the appreciation of arts in Wapolo County for people of all ethnic and socioeconomic backgrounds, which is the mission statement. So really, uh, we're t- we take that in our current board as doing public art as that being something that's accessible to all people to see in the public. Uh, So that's really been our focus in the past few years is to do as much public art as we can. How did you get involved? Uh, I think I was voluntold. Ah, perfect. Yeah. (laughs) So uh, it actually started when I was uh, working at the American Gothic house as the administrator there. Uh, It was pretty much common that uh, the administrator at the American Gothic house center was on the Arts Council to really, as you can imagine, tie in the arts from the Grantwood history and uh, the rest of Wapolo County. So I've been on it now 13 years. Wow. Yeah, okay. so uh, they so got me on. are you one of the longer standing board members? Uh, currently, I think I'm the long, or Chris Abit would be on longer than me right now. Okay. So uh, we're the two longest ones that are currently on the board, but yeah. Okay. Okay. So from, from a community perspective, um, why does the, and maybe I'm asking a simple question, I don't know, why is arts in the community so important? You know, I think one, art invokes creativity and invokes emotion. Uh, it creates a sense of community pride, uh, things that even if it's just in the fold of what you see every day, it's there and it's in whether or not you're really thinking about it. It's always there. Uh, I think that's from a current resident kind of standpoint. When we're looking from a bigger economic development uh, viewpoint, people want to move to communities that seem active and vibrant and have arts and culture going on. When you, when surveys are done of what people are looking for going into a community, that's the type of thing they want to see. So it might seem trivial to some people on the front end of spending money on art, but really it plays a, a big part of economic development in a community. You're absolutely right. It does. Um, the, the tides have really shifted in the way of economic development over the past few years. People aren't moving to a community for jobs like they used to. They're moving to communities that are going to fit their lifestyle. Um, and that is the same story across the nation. So we, we have seen a lot, of, especially with technology, uh, people are moving to communities that they can feel at home in, and obviously art is a big piece of that. Yes, definitely. Uh, yeah, people can, it's a talent attraction market these days. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, to the general public, they might see those things as fluffy, <laughs> But mm-hmm. really, it's a yeah, it's a serious business on talent attraction. So, how is um, the Ottumwa Area Arts Council funded? Uh, we do fundraising. Uh, we write grants. Uh, we usually work these days. We've really worked on a project by project basis because in a world where everybody is looking for funds, <laughs> uh, 
trying to uh, get funds for a specific project is a lot uh, more attainable. To, people can see what their money is going to directly. So mm -hmm. usually we have a project, we have a budget, and then we look for fundraising uh, opportunities. Uh, yeah. And then grants that might be available. We also do an annual fundraiser called Battle of the Brushes, which uh, we've done now, I think, seven or eight years. Uh, and we invite local artists to come. It's kind of like Iron Chef meets painting. Uh, theme is selected by the audience, and then the artists have 90 minutes to paint. And half the proceeds at the end of the night from the auction of those artworks, half go to the Arts Council and half goes to each artist. Yep. And I have one of those on my wall. I know. It's, very, I, it's one of my favorites <laughs> from a Chris Abit <laughs> yes. uh, year. <laughs> um, so um, speaking of some of those past projects, what are some of the, the more well-known projects that Ottumwa Area Arts Council has taken on? So um, if you look downtown, uh, the three blocks of East Main Street, the 100 through 300 blocks, uh, we have sculptures at each of the mid-block crossings. So uh, those would be current one of the most recent things that is uh, very out there in the public. A few years ago, we did a projection art piece in Canteen Alley. That was a lot of fun. Um, we've got sculptures in the Career Center uh, parklet in the Jefferson Street parking lot. We uh, helped fund the trailhead sculptures that you see on the trails. Uh, that was something Arts Council assisted with. And probably the biggest in size in the past few years was uh, the rehabilitation of the Ferber, Herbert Ferber sculpture and moving it to the Bridgeview Center. Uh, it was in need of some TLC, and uh, a lot of artists in the community said they would love to see that in a more prominent location. Uh, for those who don't know, Herbert Ferber is very well known throughout the world. If you read art history books, he is there. And according to many historians or art critics, ours is the best Herbert Ferber sculpture. Uh, and the one in downtown Chicago is apparently not as good as ours. So we really wanted to put it in a place of prominence. And with the Bridgeview Center there, it fit the architecture perfectly. So we were able to fundraise to uh, yeah get some work done to that to get it uh, a few things that had rusted, you know, cleaned up and repainted and then moved there. Yeah. And, you know, uh, as a lifelong Atom one, uh, for all of the things that you hear, and we won't even get into that, all of the <laughs> things that you hear about the Ferber uh, sculpture, I distinctly remember that being a part of my, basically my entire life, because as a child, I remember climbing on that <laughs> Ferber sculpture when it was downtown. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, it it is something that really has become part of Atumwa, uh, whether whether people acknowledge that or not, it's really a component of this community at this point. Yeah, definitely. It's one of those, uh, you know, people, if they, if there's an artist or art critic who knows a Tumwa, it's because of that piece. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting to see that, yeah, we have something that is so prominent in yeah. our community. Speaking of prominence, um, there is a, a big rock in oh, front yes. of Bridgeview Center as well. <laughs> yes, the Freedom Rock, uh, part of the Bubba Sorensen's 99 County Rock Painting. Uh, the Ottawa Area Arts Council took the lead on that, had lots of partners as well. Um, but yeah, took the lead on that to get that completed. And uh, again, we thought it was important to put it somewhere very prominent uh, that people could easily find. And I was just, yeah, saw people just two or three days ago uh, taking pictures in front of with their motorcycle pulled up and yeah, clearly we're doing the 99 County tour yeah. <laughs> getting and, their photos. And I think that that really goes to the, um, overall theme that you were saying about the, the art giving something to the community, because I have personally seen countless people taking pictures in front of that visitors and locals alike. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, you know, for the people that are visiting anyway, they're saying that this is in a tumwa that I'm getting this picture taken next to this really cool thing. So, you know, it is an advertisement for the city of a tumwa, very positive advertisement for yes. the city of a tumwa. Definitely. And, you know, uh, I think we try to do as an arts council today, we try to do different types of art that are going to be attractive to different people's interests. So we have several, uh, like the civil war sculpture out of the Oak tree, 
uh, at the Tumwa Cemetery. That was something the Arts Council took on. So it could be something very literal, but then we have some more abstract pieces as well. Uh, we try to use local artists, but then we also try to bring in people from state or national levels uh, to bring something different that the community hasn't seen before. So uh, we really try to do different projects that are going to appeal to different people. Gotcha. So, um, you know, you've mentioned yourself and another person. Who else uh, is taking part in the Arts Council? Yeah, so uh, Kara Galloway is our secretary. Uh, Maggie Horan is our treasurer. And then we have Fred Zesinger. I know I mentioned Chris Abbott. She's, uh, yeah, I think the longest term uh, person on there right now. Uh, Mayor Rick Johnson has joined the board. Kate Bagby and Andy Arduzer. Uh, and Kate and Andy are also newer members who are both artists. One's a painter and one's a does ceramics. So it's been great. Uh, we always joke, I am not an artist and can't draw a straight line with a ruler. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we're really excited to have, and Fred Sessinger, of course, has an art background as well. So it's been great to have more artists join the board uh, to give their insight and expertise to people like Kara, Maggie, and I, who uh, love the arts, but definitely aren't the creators of said art. <laughs> right, right. No, it, it's good to have people that are quote unquote experts in the field to, to be represented there. Definitely. So what's on the horizon for the Arts Council? We also have been working with GoPip to assist on um, getting some artwork down Church Street. So uh, not a directed project by the Arts Council, but uh, trying to assist with our expertise and connections and, and work with artists to get some sculptures down there and then hopefully some more art after that. Um, let's talk about the Battle of the Brushes for j just a, a second more, because I think that that really merits a little bit more discussion. Um, how many artists take part in that? We usually have between 10 and 14. Uh, we used to try to cap it at 10, uh, but there are so many good artists in our community <laughs> that every year I think we, we just take more. <laughs> so. so are they all predominantly Ottumwa residents? Yeah, Ottumwa, Wapolo County. Sometimes we get a couple Davis County or, you know, nearby counties. But yeah, uh, it's amazing to see how much talent we have that people don't realize. Right. That's what, that's my favorite part about that event is that the attendees get to watch them create for 90 minutes. Uh, some of the artists, uh, they say it's the most stressful thing they've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine so with people looking over your back yeah, constantly. You know, all the attendees coming to watch what you're doing and checking it out every, you know, 10 minutes. But yeah, uh, it's amazing to see their process and how they all approach it and what their ideas are based on what the theme is. Yeah. And yeah. How many people normally attend that as a spectator? We've had, uh, it's, I think we've been growing every year. I think we're last year was a little over a hundred, okay. uh, attendees awesome. that came. Yeah. So, um, we, yeah. And it's great to see. I always love an event where I don't know everybody there. <laughs> you that, know? Those are the best events. <laughs> that, that means, you know, you're tapping people who maybe, yeah, it's not the type of event they might always go to, but they know their friends in it. So then they come, they feel comfortable, and they come back again. We see a lot of repeat attendees to this event. So if somebody was looking to take part as an artist in the event, mm -hmm. how, do they, how do they go through that? Uh, they can always reach out to us. Uh, we have a Facebook page, Ottumwa Area Arts Council. Uh, we have a website. Uh, is um, ottumwaarts.org. Yes. And, and I had to think about that one for a second. <laughs> ottumwaarts.org. And uh, so our, you can email us through there and just say, hey, you know, when it comes time, would you add me to your list? Yeah. So normally what we do is, yeah, put it out on Facebook, uh, make some announcements, always email out the people who've done it before to see if they're interested uh, again. And yeah, we just keep growing our list. It is really fun for everybody listening. If you haven't been to one of the Battles of the Brushes, they, they have some auction items there uh, that are not art-related. Uh, some is art-related, but there is an auction that's going on there. It's, it's just such a fun event. And to see, the, to see the, number one, the creativity of the artists, and number two, the excitement that's building as they're 
doing the artwork from the spectator perspective, it, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. And, you know, you also at the end of the night can bid to take a piece home. Yes. And uh, so you can get some really great art uh, for a great price and yet still be supporting the organization and the artist. Yep. yep. One of the things uh, we've tried really hard to do is not take any artist for granted. <laughs> uh, if we're going to ask for an artist to help with something, we want to pay them. Maybe it's not a lot, but it's something. We uh, pe- Creative people are often the ones who get asked for the most freebies. <laughs> so, as, as a musician, I can attest to yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> so we try really hard uh, to if, uh, do a stipend or some, you know, some sort of payment if we're going to ask an artist to do something. So, uh, yeah, that's something that we, we take seriously the last few years. Not saying it wasn't done seriously before, but that's something we've really right. tried to make sure that we do because, yeah, uh, yeah, the creative ones are, it's always the easiest to say, could you just do this? You know, you're so good at it. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> well, Holly, one of the things that, that I like to do, especially when we bring uh, nonprofits in uh, for this podcast, is two questions. Um, number one, this is all really under one umbrella, but number one, um, if somebody's interested in donating uh, financial resources to the Ottumwa Area Arts Council, how do they go about doing that? Uh, we do have a donate button on our website, ottumwaarts.org. So that's a quick and easy way. Uh, but yeah, if you want to look further into something more substantial or you want to talk long-term giving, uh, you can always reach out to me and our contact info on that website and we'd be happy to sit down and uh, and talk and see how we could, uh, yeah, work together. Okay. And then the second part of that is, is for those that uh, would rather donate uh, uh, their time and service, how would they how would they reach out to do that as well? Yeah, same. Uh, you can contact us through otomaarts.org. Uh, you can find me somewhere. I'm usually every, you know, you're, I'll be you're somewhere. The one person that's <laughs> everywhere. You can find me there's, somewhere. There's evidently 17 Holly Bergs going around the town <laughs> when it's all one person. Well, yeah, you, uh, we'd love to have more board members. Uh, we're excited. Uh, yeah, kind of during, especially during COVID and things, I feel like we dwindled a little bit. Uh, we had a lot of great board members who were like, I've been on here 25 years. Let's get, it's time. To for fresh ideas and okay. uh so yeah we kind of dwindled a little during that time and yeah we're building getting a little bit bigger now which is exciting the more okay. more energy around the table just means we get more done that's right <laughs> so do you have any final thoughts for the people that that are listening uh we are i'd say one we're always looking for people who like you said uh would be interested in joining us uh, if you have ideas for something you'd like to see done, we're always open to hearing ideas. One of the things I think people like about being on this board is uh, most of the people who are on the board have said, hey, I think it'd be really cool to do insert something here, and then we do it. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's one of those boards that you get to see what you did. Or, mm-hmm. you know, uh, there is a visual impact at the end of the day. And so you get to see it every day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just driving down West second street and we helped do a West end ignite mural, the love where you live. That's on West second and McLean. And it just makes me so happy every time I see and it. My understanding <laughs> is, is there's going to be a special surprise for Ragbri coming. Yes. Yep. We uh, have a special mural. We're working with the hospitality committee and Connie Ferguson. Uh, that is going to be up for Ragbri, but then it's going to become a permanent fixture in the community after yeah, that. And, and uh, I, I have both heard and seen the start of it, and um, it's arguably going to be the um, closest thing to what a Tumwa is as a whole. And I, I'm so <laughs> excited about that. Yeah, I'm really excited for that. Uh, again, yeah, trying to make sure we encompass groups throughout our community, uh, I think is so important. Yeah. So yeah, really excited to have that one coming, which was a super vague, uh, description for everyone, but you'll It'll leave a, you a surprise to yeah, look forward in to. a few weeks. You'll know. Yeah. Well, Holly, thank you so much for coming in and talking about the Atomo area arts council with us. Um, 
everybody that's listening. Um, again, this is going to be a, a multi-part series focused on the arts in the community. We have a vibrant art community in Ottumwa, and I look forward to sharing uh, some of the other organizations that are doing great things. This community is not short of things going on specifically revolving around the arts, so uh, make sure you uh, keep listening and uh, hear about all the other exciting things that are going on in Ottumwa. With that, thank you everybody for listening, and we will catch you next time on Talk Ottumwa. Greater Ottumwa Partners in Progress would like to thank the following Signature Circle investors who help us deliver on our mission to advance the prosperity of the Ottumwa region. Cargill Incorporated, Seafirst Credit Union, Elliott Oil Company, John Deere, McCune and Reed Insurance, Ottumwa Regional Health Center, the Ottumwa Legacy Foundation, South Ottumwa Savings Bank, City of Ottumwa, and the Wapalo County Board of Supervisors. Please visit www.gopip.org to keep up on community events, podcasts, and everything Ottumwa.